Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. If you are new here, very special warm welcome to you. My name is Heather and I have been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. On this channel, I put all of my old episodes, new episodes, extra content, and I drink coffee and talk about books, which is what I'm going to do today. It's my homemade, homemade iced mocha. So good. So I'm going to tell you about, I'm going to share with you a new author that I just discovered. And probably some of you have already discovered this author and you're going to say, Heather, of course, like we know it's like, oh yeah, Nicola Cornick. I am late to the Nicola Cornick party. However, I've read two of her books in the last week. And as Gandalf says, a wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. So um, the wizard part of me is not late to Nicola Cornick. Um, so my husband and I do date a little different than a lot of couples we do a lot of things different than a lot of couples because we're we're just that kind um but because we're both self-employed and contractors and stuff we have flexibility over our time and so we make time on friday mornings that's our date time so we go out for breakfast on friday morning after we drop our daughter off at school and then we do something fun and we've started going to bookstores um we used to go on a lot of bookstore dates before we had a child uh and then bookstores time turned into you know kind of the kids room and if we were lucky being able to take a quick glance at the stuff I was interested in um and you know now it's getting but she's like almost 10 so she can look at stuff on her own and I can look at stuff and you know all of that but still you know I want to see what she's interested in and I want to kind of be on top of what she's reading obviously and um, see what she's picking out and what she's looking at. So still bookstore time is mostly me following Hannah around time <laughs> and um, and Hannah leading the way as kids are wont to do. So recently I've started doing more bookstore time by myself, um, making time for that. And it has been amazing. And I highly recommend <laughs> If you are a mom who misses bookstore time, that you figure something out. You can sacrifice. A, I haven't washed my hair in like a week and a half. Like, just, that's just not my priority. And you can tell, right? I need to trim my bangs. But, um, you know, we you make time for what's important. And so I've always made time for working out. That's always been something like other stuff goes, but working out is always right there. Um, because the gym is my happy place. And I'm weird like that. Uh, I don't look like a typical gym rat, um, you know, and I've I've never been a, a total typical gym rat, but there's always something like so wonderful about being able to go into this place, put on my headphones, turn up my music like really loud. Nobody wants anything from me. I can just be super quiet. I can grunt and nobody's going to look at me funny. So I do like cardio and then I lift weights and, um, you know, I just, um, I, grunt and I make noises and I make faces and I've got sweat dripping down my back and like nobody cares it's like awesome and I've got my music on really loud and it, like I'm probably damaging my hearing I'll deal with that later um anyway and I just I just love the gym so that's always been something that I've made time for but I have not made time for books bookstore time I am changing that and I'm definitely going to start adding in more bookstore time um in my life why did I say all this Nicola Cornick. And so I was browsing and, you know, it's funny because when you get most of your books online, like I do, I, um, I subscribe to Scribd and also because I, um, have a podcast and stuff, there's this platform called NetGalley where reviewers and bloggers and stuff can, can get review copies of books. And also because I work in the library world, I get like galley copies at library conferences and, um, and so I've never had a shortage of things to read. And then also I like use the library too. So there's always like a ton of books available online for me. Like I've got like five different places to go to, to get books as, as do we all. Right. But there's something like with those algorithms, it always gives me the next thing that I'm interested in, but I never really get like surprised. Like it's never really like, Ooh, what's this? And that's what you get with the, the browsing experience, either in a library or in a bookstore, 
that just kind of like looking and saying, oh, that looks interesting. And that's what Nicola Cornick was for me. So it was called a book called The Last Daughter of York. And the cover looked pretty. You know, they say don't judge a book by a cover, but like everybody judges a book by a cover because a lot of thought and effort goes into the cover. And I know this having made my own cover for my own books um, that I want the cover to represent what the book is. So anyway, tangent. Um, I So I saw it and I was like, oh, that looks really interesting. And I started reading it or I started reading the back and it involves time travel. Now, you guys, I have always totally geeked out on time travel, like ever since I was young, super young. Um, one of my first jobs in high school, I was a docent at a Revolutionary War Museum and I was like 14 and I used to give these tours. And because it was really small and um, it was like very kind of it was the nineties and stuff. Wasn't it like, okay, we used to like look at his letters without wearing gloves and stuff. And I used to have to, it was the, the home of a revolutionary war general. And I used to go down and like close up the house at the end of the day. Cause we were all based in the barn and that's where the tours would start. So I would go down at the end of the day and close up the house sometimes. And um, you know, and it was always funny because I would be down in the house by myself and I would be walking through these rooms that were where this family lived and where people have lived for 200 years since it, well, it was built in 1792. So at the time it was 1992, I think when I was doing, I was, I guess it was 1991 when I started there. Mold. Anyway. So where was I? Oh. Um, and I remember thinking like how these were the same shutters that his wife, Catherine would have, um, would have closed and, and how cool that was that like, I was touching the same thing. And like, I was walking in the same steps where all of the family was. And I used to think like, was it, wouldn't it be cool if like it was all going on right now? Like we're so close. And the only thing that separates us is time, which is, you know, kind of flexible and fluid and, and changes. And, you know, then I started watching Star Trek and Star, yeah, Star Trek and reading about time travel books and all of this. And it was like, I've always been really interested in that. So Nicola Kornick writes time travel books um, that are based around you know, history, British history stuff. So the two that I read were very specifically Elizabeth. Well, one was Elizabethan and one was Tudor. I read The Lost, Last Daughter of York and The Forgotten Sister. Um, one dealt with the death of Amy Robsart, which is really interesting because I've been talking about that a lot recently. And then the other one was uh, a theory around the princes in the tower that involves time travel. And man, they wrote me and so they wrote me in so much. First, I checked it out from the library to read, but then I was really into it and I had to stop to cook and I didn't want to stop like with the story. So then the audiobooks are on script. So then I started listening to the audiobook. So I would go back and forth between reading the book and then listening to the audiobook when I could when I was cooking or whatever. So I got through two of her books this week. Um and they are so good. So the one deals with um, so they they both involve the two that I've read involve kind of contemporary stories that are based around contemporary women who are in kind of like crossroad places in their life. Um, there's some kind of mystery involved that they have to like kind of figure out what's happening and they wind up, there's a lot of, um, I think it's called psychometry, which I had never heard of. Um, it's a type of um, like kind of, a cult. I don't know if it's a cult, like, like where you can psychically tell memories of, of um, things. So you could pick up, you know, like a hairband and um, know all of the frustrations I had with my hair and this hairband, but you know, like older things, so you pick up a piece of jewelry and you can feel, and you actually feel the memories of, of those things or being able to like touch the walls and feel that the memories of the walls. And I'd never heard it. I'd never heard that that term before. So there's these women, they're in these situations, they have um, this power of being able to read memories on items and they get transported and um, back into time and they have to figure things out or else there's other people around them who who are time traveling. And they the stories, it goes back and forth between the story in the period that it's set, like in 1483 with the princess in the tower or in the early Elizabethan reign, um, with the death of Amy Robsart. And so they go back and forth between the present day and the 
time that the story takes place in as well, the other time. And the history is like really, I mean, it's obviously she knows her history. It's, it's really spot on stuff. She has some interesting theories, which involves the time travel, right? So of course you're going to say, oh, well, that couldn't happen, but I don't know. I don't know if it couldn't. Like the universe is so vast and so huge. And like, you know, we know I'm out. So I don't know, maybe I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say no to anything, right? The universe is like, insane there's like the multiverse right like there's like a a whole other parallel universe is going on so um because I made a Gandalf quote earlier I I saw a YouTube comment on some Lord of the Rings video recently and it made me smile because the person said Tolkien didn't just write this all down Lord of the Rings is actually a story that happened in another universe and Tolkien was able to Tolkien somehow had the um the ability to to write that down so it's the actual history of what happened in another universe and I thought that was a really cool comment and I was like I like that idea so now I'm sticking with that that Lord of the Rings was actually happened in in another universe the point is the point is I have no idea what's happening with the universe and the multiverse and everything is so vast and so huge and so maybe time travel is going on and I just don't know maybe it's going on in another dimension I don't know so I'm not going to say no so she has very interesting ideas with very interesting theories about what might have happened with the princess in the tower and with Amy Robsart's death. She's got a whole slew of books. So I've got, I've got some to work through now. And if you haven't read her and you're interested in the whole kind of time slip time travel sort of genre with really good history behind it. And the characters are really good. Too. Like I really cared about the characters. It wasn't just kind of like, Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, I really cared about the characters. They're stronger women um, and, you know, kind of um, they've got these friend groups around them that are helping them. And, and it's just, there's the drama is in like the story itself rather than there being like a lot of drama between the relationships and and stuff. So um, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the characters. Uh, I love, I didn't know, I kind of started to figure out with the last daughter of York one. I, I kind of started to figure it out about halfway through what was going to happen, but I couldn't, it wasn't until the very end that I, you know, put it all together. And then with the forgotten sister, which was about Amy Robsart's death, um, that one I started to put together too, just cause I'd read the first book. So I kind of knew where, where she would go. Um, but again, it wasn't until the end that I, that I figured it all out or that it was all that I got what happened. Um, so I'm super excited to read all of her books. I think I'm going to spread them out because the thing I often do is I'll find a book by an author and then I'll find out that I love that author. And then I read all of those books and then I'm done. And then it's like, all right, well, they can't write more. I guess I could ask chat GPT to write a novel in their style. I don't know. Maybe I don't think the AI is that advanced yet, but maybe that's what I could do in the future. But um, I did this with Haruki Murakami when I first read Norwegian Wood, and I realized how love how much I loved um, Haruki Murakami, and I read like all of his books, and then there was nothing. So now every time a new Haruki Murakami book comes out, which I think the last one I lost track of on the last one, but it's been a couple of years, I read it so slowly. And like, I just make it last because it's like chocolate and you get like one little piece and it's just like, I have to make this last. So I think that's what I'm going to do with Nicola Kornick. I think I'm not going to read them all at once. I'm going to kind of ration them out and read them um, maybe one every couple of months just so that they last longer. So the whole point is if you, you should totally check out her books. Um, I'm also totally fangirling all over her because she followed me back on Twitter. So it's like, oh, Nicola Kornick, my Twitter friend. <laughs> um, so I don't have anything else to say other than I loved, loved, loved these books. I'm so glad I read them. You should definitely bring more bookstore time into your life if it's something that you struggle with doing. And that's it. Have an amazing weekend. I hope you get lots of reading done. What are you reading? Let me know in the comments what you're reading. I would love to know. Um, and if you want more book review videos, let me know in the comments too, because I got books that I read. I got books I write too. I'll have to do a giveaway. 
of one of my books. One, my books involve time travel too. So I was really, um, I was really interested in that as well. So yeah, love these, love this book and you should totally check it out if it sounds interesting to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye.